Most people don't believe me when I tell them this, but I grew up in a haunted house. At least for the first years of my life, I believed this to be true. My mom and I stayed for about a year in the house until things got too strange to handle. My mom was a single parent who was busy working to provide for her son. We couldn't afford a large house or one in the best neighborhood, so like most single parents, she took the best that was available. It happened to be an early century row house that sat on a tiny hill in Santa Ana, street number 9899 on First Street. The house was truly the perfect fit for Mom and I. It had two bathrooms, an, e an eat-in kitchen, and two bedrooms. What more could you ask for on one income, especially in California? Truthfully, things were great for a while there. I remember having Christmas at the house with our family all gathered around a small living room and also have a few fun evenings with friends. But then, things started to get, well, kind of weird. At first, I, I it was just some oddball moments. Things that could be explained away by logical explanations, like a mall earthquake in the night, Things around the house will move ever so slightly. It would be a misplaced book or an open curtain that was closed the night before, or a light left on that we thought we had turned off. But in the moments became, well, more substantial. We woke one morning to find cupboards in our kitchen open, every single one of them. My mom looked to me and I to her. She and we both had the same thought. Why'd you do that? Of course, neither of us did. After that, our cupboards just didn't, just couldn't stay closed. This turned into a morning ritual. Get up, make breakfast, close the cupboards, and go to school. But then, it was other things too. One morning we woke up to find all four of our dining room uh, table chairs thrown about the living room. It looked like someone had tossed them from the kitchen, one by one, heaving or floating them to an entirely different room in the house. My mother took a deep breath and put them back on the table like nothing strange had happened. Now, it was only six at a time. I was only six at a time, but I remember hearing my mom talk on the phone to a friend. She talked about seeing an old man in the window, when my face that visited her every night. The face appeared and scowled at her. She hid under covers until morning. We'll make a whole facing a window thing all the more terrifying is when my aunt stayed with me one night. My mom was out of town for work. Once again, I overheard a conversation I probably wasn't supposed to. My aunt asked my mom who the old man in the window was and if she called a priest or a medium to deal with the presence in the house. To guess my mom replied, you saw him too? Things only got worse from there on out. One night we came uh, home kind of late and entered in, in the entire house reeked of smoke. A very peculiar kind of smoke. It wasn't the smell of something burning like our house had been lit on fire. It was a pipe smoke. A common smell anyone could recognize who ever had a pipe before. <clears throat> the smell was the strongest in my room which of course freaked my mom out to no end. She opened the windows and turned on the fan, but the smell stayed strong like someone was still in the house lighting up their pipe. Most people would have probably fled by this point. Chairs that moved at night, cupboards that can't stay open, a face in in the window, and now a smell that was as real as someone smoking in front of you. But we stayed at least a little while longer. I suppose all these events were just a precursor of what happened next. One morning, right after I woke up, my mom and I found all my toys in the living room. All of them. Mind you, I had a lot of toys. <laughs> they were perfectly arranged in stacks, according to their kind. Mom asked me 
when I had moved the toys, I told her I hadn't. That's when she ran into my room. In the corner where I kept the toys, she found an old pair of boxing shorts and a wooden cane. My mom was crying at this point, asking me where I'd gotten them. I told her I'd never seen them before. That's the moment she said where she saw the man in the window again. But this time he was standing in the hall, grinning at her. We left after that. The next weekend, family and friends helped us move out of the house and went to stay with my grandma for a while. Looking back, I'm not really sure what to believe about it. Was it paranormal? Or something equally as scary? The real world explanations. I don't know, of course. I've always found one memory particularly odd. The neighborhood to the right of our house was an elderly man named Mr. Cochran who lived alone. I only remember meeting him one time officially when we first moved in, but there was something that happened that I never told Mom about. One day when I was in my backyard playing by myself, I saw Mr. Cochran in his bedroom window. He was just standing there staring at me. He was wearing boxer shorts, smoking a pipe, and holding a can in his hand. A twisted smile appeared on his face. He stood there smiling sickly, puffing at the smoke from the pipe. I don't know, of course, but it always made me wonder. What if our house wasn't haunted by ghosts or otherworldly entities, but by someone from this realm? What if all those things that took place were real? To this day, whenever I think about that, house on first street i get chills i just can't shake the feeling that maybe mr cochran was in our house watching asleep waiting for the next opportunity to unleash his next planting.